Welcome back everybody. Happy to be on the road, happy to be making some money. It's been tough, it's been rough, but it's not about that today. Uh, here's the weather, weather report. We've had hail, we've had uh, snow slash rain mix, things like that. Nevertheless, it's springtime, but with like 50 degrees outside, that's what we're dealing with. Um, picking up at a Post Falls, delivering to Boise, and this is a medical load, basically surgical equipment. So, pays me a round trip, pays me from home to pick up to Boise and back home. So, decent load, um, don't get those very often, but here and there, once a week, once every two weeks, something like that pops up. Um, not exactly like this, but even shorter runs. And I've been doing some here and there, so can you survive on that, on the one load a week? No, I would say no. But just because, you know, I've got office work and other things, you know what I mean? I can survive. I can still make videos for you. So locals, especially on the West Coast, no. I'd rather go to work at McDonald's if I had to do only locals on the West Coast and rely only on those loads, so you'll make more doing, you know, fast food or doing something else, working hourly somewhere, versus, you know, waiting a full week or, or whatever to get out of here. But once you're out and you're, you know, out and about, out of the West Coast, things are easier. I'm talking about, don't think that West Coast, I'm talking about California. California is okay. I'm talking about Washington, Oregon, Utah, Idaho, these states, Montana, these are the hard ones to get out of. Let's go pick up that tote. <coughs> Sunflower seeds stuck in my mouth in the wrong place. Picking up right here this green tote. I have to take out the instruments out. Take out the instruments out. <laughs> take the instruments out and then basically from here uh, take a picture of the set ID numbers. Basically, it's got special stickers on there. Send them off to the broker. Broker will get me a bill of lading. I have my printer with me. I'm going to get it printed off, and then we're on the way. So this should take, like, literally three minutes with tying it down. Just in case somebody's wondering what some spine surgical instruments look like. Whatever you can see through those little holes, that's what they look like. I'm not going to open them up further in there, but yeah, that's it. I'm going to go help somebody else get their surgery tonight or tomorrow morning. I've kind of already left this as my like spot to load and tie up because for the small stuff, I've got like three different hooks. So I just, you know, throw a strap over the top of it right here and it just sits up against the wall. So all I need to do is just send them some pictures of this right here, this number. Same thing on the other softer case as well. And then, then we're on their way. They're still going to get sterilized, don't worry. You're not going to get no spine surgery with it sitting on my dirty floor. That easy, it's done. 
sent them the sent them the proper because we've been doing this for a while a long time years to where we know what kind of labels we need and the drivers that do pick these up for the most part they you know after they do it once or twice they already know what's going on so you know it ain't that hard it ain't that hard at all to get this done so for me it's simple for everybody else you know it's kind of I hope it's simple too and the, the good thing is this thing just runs out and delivers direct so I don't have to worry about you know looking for a place to park over there sleep over there wherever where can you do it but usually in a big hospital a decent sized hospital I just park in the emergency area where the emergency is in front of the hospital parking lot and you could actually lay down and sleep right on site without even being bothered or you know they don't touch you as far as my luck has been so far they've never been touching us me anyways <coughs> never been kicked out of a hospital parking lot before but I do park in the emergency area where, where there's emergency where it says emergency that's where I park in that area just so you guys know over there they have no clue if you have an emergency or if you don't don't have an emergency whatever you have whatever the case is nobody's gonna bother you at least they don't bother me so and from my experience I tell other drivers to do the same thing the ones that actually follow and listen and follow along and listen and do it that way they have never been in trouble either they've never been kicked out so and if they do ask you something you can always tell them I've got a delivery or I got a pickup over here in the morning there's nowhere else to sleep so you know I gotta I gotta sleep here and make sure I'm here that's all you tell them worst case they'll tell you to go move somewhere else or maybe they'll tell you to go park at another part of the building somewhere but that's worst case stop by one of the healthier places to eat not the healthiest but healthier which is panda I know it's still fast food but hey it's not a fat greasy burger I got myself some firecracker shrimp a big large side of it um, and then for later if I do want it on the way back because I'm planning this load goes to Boise uh, from Post Falls to Boise it's gonna be like a six and a half hour trip one way so it's gonna be a 12 hour trip well 12 and a half about 12 and a half round trip for me back home so I'm planning to see if I can pull it off and just you know not even sleep at all and just get back home or maybe I'll take a snooze for a couple hours we'll see how I feel on the way back I have really nothing to rush for but I am not gonna lay down and sleep for eight hours that's for sure maybe maybe two maybe four hours and that's plenty enough to keep going and uh, still you know work the whole day and just go to sleep at a normal time in the evening again so that's how I do it that's how I that's what's enough for me other people there's some people that call us up and talk about how this nighttime driving is and all that and think they can do it and then it comes down to they do a load that says well per se they got to drive all night so they unload in the morning if they drove all night they unload in the morning and they take that day off and then become available the next day which is kind of I mean you do you we want to be safe but in the end doing only you know a load every other day is kind of bad because in the end your paycheck is half the paycheck of somebody else's that can you know sleep four to six hours until we get them a load and then still constantly be available no matter what and if you need a little extra time you could just say hey make sure when you do get me something direct ask for a couple hours of you know extra time besides what we divide the mileage by 50 miles an hour because even that alone the direct loads we divide the mileage by 50 miles an hour and obviously people are driving a lot faster than some 50 miles an hour so you gain time to sleep as long as you don't waste it somewhere you get what I'm saying if you do hit up a thumbs up in the in the comment section because if you're just gonna do 
say you got loaded in the afternoon and it takes you and it's quite a bit of miles and then you drive the afternoon into the night and get a, <coughs> get a drive all night long again or all night long and unload in the morning first thing and then you're like man I'm beat I can't I can't do this well most of them good loads are in the afternoon anyway slash evening time so you know you sleep until dispatch wakes you up that's the only way to that's the only way to be productive at this and make money because otherwise like I said if you're skipping a day just because oh I drove all night and oh my you know now I need a whole day of rest well that sucks and that's too much so you know too much resting maybe it gets good for you but it ain't good for your pocketbook that's for sure and at the end of the week your paycheck is going to suffer too it's going to show it's going to be way different than the guy that sleeps for four to six hours and says hey give me a load then I'll figure out my rest, you know, throughout the trip again. So, something to think about for the people that do that, if you guys do that. And this time, I didn't get gypped with my food. I actually got it almost full all the way to the top. Sometimes they, like, leave it right there. And I'm like, man, I'm paying for a large, but I get a medium. What is this? So, sometimes I... Uh, end up leaving them a review about it you know so next time they don't rip somebody else off because I don't always open it right away sometimes I grab my food then I keep driving either to get out of traffic or whatever it is whatever the case is I don't always open it right away this time I wanted to check and also I've told you guys this before but you guys can test it yourself if you eat you know this kind of Chinese Japanese whatever food Asian food with chopsticks it tastes a whole lot better I'm telling you try it and let me know in the comments section if you've never done it before if you always eat all your stuff with a fork try it sometime either Chinese buffet restaurant whatever try to eat everything like rice and everything else maybe you're gonna have a hard time with rice you gotta practice on rice but if you do other things any kind of meat beet, you know what I mean anything else with chopsticks it tastes better. For me, it does. Let me know if it does for you. Try it if you have it. good in Umatilla, Oregon. Basically, if you're like uh, passing through, heading to Boise or eastbound, you're going to be driving through Highway 82 coming into uh, Oregon. I suggest filling up in Umatilla because diesel is 386 here. And then as soon as you get, you know, further back out and all that, it's going to be over four bucks. 419 for whatever I un purposely did not just do it because I'm I'm still trying to hurry I'll find diesel for a decent price in Idaho somewhere but I'm not even sure I just looked because I'm not even a half tank yet and for me to just you know fill up here and save if it's gonna save say 25 cents a gallon even for 10 gallons well what you know two dollars and fifty cents I mean come on it's kind of <coughs> I don't you know what I mean I don't want to waste time yet so but if I was like uh, running closer to empty where I can put in 20 gallons in then that would be a different story but I'm just telling you guys if you're ever in the Tri-Cities area or whatever then you're gonna be heading to either Portland or you're gonna be heading eastbound through Highway 82 and then getting on 84 and all that kind of stuff Umatilla, take that exit and, uh, and fill up at the truck stop right there, right off the freeway because it's got the cheapest fuel in this area, guaranteed. And trust me, I know because I drive through here very often. So I always pay attention to where is the best fuel. And since I'm, you know, since I'm the West Coast guy out here, I know where the cheapest fuel is. Over the years, you learn how to find the cheapest fuel.
decided I wanted a Powerade, but 347 here as well. Um, this is another one, just to show you guys. Another gas station that's a decent price one on I-84. Let's go see what it is, because that said 347. I think they're lying a little bit, because that's with their card, their discount card, or whatever card you gotta have to actually have it, but let's go see exactly in reality how much diesel is. Oh, yeah, that's my, that's what I like. I like to be here at the end. So, well, since I'm stopping by, I wanted a Powerade, and uh, we'll just fill up as well, because I don't like to waste time anywhere. So while I'm grabbing that, it's gonna get full. I'm gonna grab uh, the washing stick, wash my windshield, because it is gotten nasty. I recommend doing that all the time for everybody at every fill up. I don't even. Oh, see that? They like to lie. It's 387, which is still the same price. But on the, you guys saw it on the board. They like to lie because with their discounted card and blah blah blah, special fuel card that works with this particular gas station, it would be 347. If not, then it's 387. It says so right there. Oh. Just so you don't think I'm lying. America. You could say whatever you want. And people will believe you. And then they come over here and go, what's going on? And then they got, uh, you know, something to support their lie as well. A made up story. That, oh yes, you actually have to have this and this. You have to jump through a lot of hoops to be able to save money. So... USA, the land of opportunity. Scam whoever you want to scam and make as much as you can make. Really, anywhere and everywhere. Time to find the loading dock. Take the second exit okay. onto North Curtis Road, then the Just, I was told to leave it at the loading dock. Not call anybody, not do anything. Just leave it at the loading dock. And it'll be a picture POD for delivery, and I'm out of here. Don't have to go worrying about signatures or any of that kind of stuff, so. I'm just uh, in search of that dock. Let's go find it. Pretty big hospital. Probably the biggest one they have here in town. Maybe. West area, doctor offices, hospital entrances. North entrance. Hmm. Where would the loading dog be? Tell me, guys, if you live here, let me know where the loading dock is. Main entrance. How about that? Look at that. That's all fancy looking. Maybe a thumbnail picture should be here. Seems like I've came. I mean, it is the receiving area, but I don't know if it's the only only one or not. Saw a guy throwing the trash away, and then he took me inside to talk to somebody else. Somebody else took me through the <laughs> inside, but right, I came right out here. Anyway, I don't know if this is the only one or not, but the S7 entrance. I don't know, maybe I should just leave it here and have them figure it out. <clears throat> or maybe I should just make one more circle and see if I find another loading dock area or not. I mean, I imagine there has to be something with uh, a bigger, where bigger trucks come in somewhere. So if not here, and there's somewhere else, then it's obvious that they do receiving here. Maybe this is a shipping area. It said receiving on that black thing, so... <sighs> T U will be towed, towing. I mean, I don't know. I'll go make a circle, see if I find anything else. Well, it's not just me out here in the middle of the night at like what is the 2:23 local time, unloading. There's a uh, Cisco doing their delivery with like cups and whatnot. I gotta go close, turn off the lights inside. Anyways, 
I did unload it here at the loading dock exactly where I thought it would be but before I did that I had to make sure that that's the only loading dock here that way you know if this is not a main one or something that belongs to some other building or something like that I wanted to be sure that it was the right one so I went through the emergency room asked the front lady desk if they only have one loading dock she didn't know called security Security said, well, no, 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 hold on, friend. I got to double check. We don't just leave things outside at the loading dock. So he called uh, building court or hospital coordinator. Hospital coordinator said, no, 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 don't leave anything outside. Um, you know, let them in and leave it inside. So by the time he came, uh, logistics coordinator, after hours logistics coordinator, two people came out and they actually accepted it, signed and it got left at the loading dock sitting there so I took pictures of it and all that kind of good stuff so sometimes the le the less you say the better it is for you and the less you open your mouth the better it is but you know I just wanted to make sure and by trying to make sure and do the right thing you kind of end up doing spending more time I guess doing everything getting more people involved in this which is kind of you know i don't know somebody might not like it somebody might say oh that's a weird delivery after hours at night or whatever i don't know it just seems weird like these people were all confused they said that nobody's ever delivered anything here like that like after hours or whatever and had to whatever but that cisco guy right there he's delivering right now and they let him in they open a the door for him so when they open the door for him, he's just, you know, pallet jacking everything inside. I guess he does that all the time. But me, nope. It's a first for me. Anyway, it is mountain time, 2.23 a.m. My local time door, that's it. I can actually come in here. Ooh, dark, dark, dark. Who's scared of the dark? Not me. So anyways... 130 127 right now my home time pacific time so i'm gonna put it in my gps let's go home and uh because boise you know i know i that i did get a round trip pay and all that kind of good stuff you guys know that i already told you otherwise i don't really leave the house if you don't because this northwest area and just really mainly the northwest is the problem california you can still get out of california and keep going somewhere california has a lot of freight going up to washington and oregon as well but then the washington and oregon part and utah right now as well and montana everything sucks it's really hard to get out so and from boise pff, good luck i mean once in a while there is freight out here sometimes there are loads but you know for 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 there to be a load going back home or even back to Seattle or back to whatever, even Montana, there's there's barely any such thing. If you see a load once in a week, once every two weeks from here going somewhere, that's a good day because there's really very, very few freight. I mean, there's some loads that some of that, there was a broker that used to be posting all those, um, what do you call it? Elon Musk stuff. Gosh. SpaceX stuff. But they're paying. They pay all in to the company, whatever. It's like 500 and something miles. They pay 500 bucks to Seattle, to that Redmond. So I don't know why it's so cheap. Maybe brokers, you know, trying to live up on it. You know, doing a house payment, uh, a car payment, and, you know, taking kids to private school every time somebody takes that load I'm not sure but it seems very cheap especially from this area and I know sometimes it's really hard to find a vehicle out here because people sit 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 and they'll just leave if they're inexperienced or the dispatch is inexperienced then they might leave them sitting here but experienced dispatch usually will not let people sit here usually they'll calculate miles going out to Salt Lake that's what we normally do but right now, Salt Lake sucks too, just as bad as it does over here too. So sometimes it's better to get out of an area where, and sit and wait in an area where there's, you know, less freight or barely any freight. That way when there is freight, 
you know, there you get it. You get the freight when it comes out. You actually win it. I don't know. That's my thoughts. Whatever you guys say. However, you guys like Boise, you can comment that. I'm not talking about that it's such a great city and all that. It's a good city, clean city. I like it. Um, I wouldn't really live out here because there's not a whole lot of outdoorsy stuff. You know, no no good lakes, no good mountains and all that kind of thing. The stuff I like. But besides that, as far as cleanliness and zero bums, oh, I tell you what, guys, that's, that's the ticket. Go. Let's go home. That's the ticket. Unpaved. There's no unpaved route going to my house. I don't know what this GPS is being a little being weird. Well, guys, we'll see how far I can make it. Take the next left onto West it'll be what it'll be. If I make it, you know, all the way home. What does it show? 8.22 a.m.? I think I could probably squeeze the, squeeze it in there before 8, 1.30. It's usually a six-hour drive if you just haul. So 1.30, 30, 3.30, 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, 7.30. Six-hour drive. 7.30. It ain't horrible. 